today we're going to put some notes into your notebook about adding and subtracting fractions. So I want you to open to your next clean page and put your heading at the top, which would be adding and subtracting fractions, and write these down. I've tried to make it as few words as possible, um, just key steps to help you remember what you need to do if you're adding and subtracting fractions. The first thing is that you need to make sure that you have common denominators. Before you can add or subtract, you must have common denominators. That means that your denominator is the same number for both fractions. Now, sometimes you already have common denominators when you start a problem, but many times you will not. And so, in order to make common denominators, you're going to have to rename one, either one or both of the fractions using an equivalent fraction so that the denominators match. Once you have common denominators, you can move on to step two, which is to add or subtract the numerators, just like you would normally add or subtract. And that is your new numerator. Step three, the denominator stays the same. And the final step four is to reduce if you can at all. Sometimes we call that simplifying. So you should always check to see if you can simplify or reduce your answer to lowest terms. Make sure you have this copied into your notebook before you continue on to the next slide. Now let's take a look at an example. And this example should also be copied down into your notebook after those instructions. Okay, so for our example, the problem is four-fifths plus two-thirds equals what? Okay, well, the first thing we need to do is make sure we have common denominators. And in this problem, we do not. Our denominators are five and three. So we have to think of what number do they have in common that we could use as a denominator. Okay, well, one way to find that is just to do five times three, and that's 15. So sometimes that's a, it's a really quick way to get a denominator. It's not always the best denominator to use, but it always works. So let's use 15 as our common denominator. So we need to rename the fractions with those common denominators. So we wanna have 15 as our denominator. Well, these need to be equivalent, so to go from 5 to 15, we multiplied by 3. Whatever you do to the denominator, you got to do the same thing to the numerator. So we have to multiply by 3 as well. So that's how we got 12. So 12 fifteenths is equivalent to 4 fifths. We renamed it. Then we need to rename 2 thirds. And we want to use 15 as our denominator. So to do that, we have to multiply 3 times 5. Whatever you do to the denominator, you've got to do the same thing to the numerator, so we have to multiply by 5 here as well. So 2 times 5 is 10. 10 fifteenths is equivalent to 2 thirds. Now, we're looking at our problem with common denominators. Next step is to add the numerators and keep the denominator the same. So if we add 12 plus 10, we get 22, and our denominator stays 15. We have added these fractions. However, we can reduce or simplify the answer. So let's take that 22 fifteenths. It's an improper fraction for one thing. So let's change it um, into a mixed number. We get 1 and 7 fifteenths, and that can't be reduced any more than that. So here we have our answer, 1 and 7 fifteenths. Make sure you have this example copied into your notes before you continue. Now, I want you to try some, and I do want you to put these in your notes. So I want you to copy this problem into your notes, pause the video, solve the problem, then resume the video. Okay, by now, you should have completed this problem in your notebook. So you need to make common denominators. Well, I'm going to use 6 because I don't have to change 1 6 then. I can do 3 times 2 to get 6. So I'm going to rename 2 thirds. I'm going to multiply them both by 2. So I get 4 6 plus the one-sixth that we've got here. And my answer will be four plus one is five. Denominator stays the same. 
and 5 sixths cannot be reduced, so my answer is 5 sixths. Now you might have used like 18, for example, as a common denominator, or you could have used 12. There's many numbers you could have used. It doesn't matter. You would have had to do some reducing or simplifying at the end, but you should have still finally gotten down to the answer 5 sixths. Make sure you have all of this copied into your notes. And we're going to try one more, this time a subtraction problem. Same thing, just subtract. Now I want you to pause this again, copy down the problem, solve it, and then resume the video. Okay, so you should have solved this problem. I've got a 6 and a 4. I could use 12, I could use 24, I'm going to use 12. I like to use the lowest common denominator possible because that means less simplifying at the end. So I need to rewrite these fractions so that we have common denominators. All right, what am I doing to 6 to get to 12? I'm multiplying it by 2. So i got to do the same thing to the top. 5 times 2 is 10. What am I doing to 4 to get to 12? I'm multiplying it by 3. So I have to multiply this by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Now I can subtract. Ooh, whoops, that was an accident. Now I can subtract 10 minus 9 is 1. My denominator stays the same. 1 twelfth cannot be reduced any further. Now you might have used a different common denominator, and that's okay. But after you simplify, you should still get down to 1 twelfth. Make sure you have this also copied into your notes.